Hello, and welcome to another episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Anna. And I'm your host, Alyssa. During today's episode, we will be highlighting everything you need to know from world to local news. First, let's travel all the way to Tianjin, China, where various explosions have left more than 100 dead. The blasts were reportedly the result of lax safety procedures in the local Chinese industries. The bombs have also released toxic fumes, which may cause greater devastation for the area in the near future. The state council in China has called for a nationwide inspections of companies using harmful or dangerous chemicals. Now let's check it out with Michelle Martel. Hello, I'm Michelle Martel, Promotional Services Manager here at the Batavia Public Library. Please join us at the library at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, August 25th for a slide presentation on Illinois sculptor Laredo Taft. Art historian Jeff Misher will be here to talk about Taft and his iconic sculptures in Chicago, Champaign, Illinois, and other parts of the U.S. Please register online at bataviapubliclibrary.org or call the reference desk. Tribute artist Ed Parzanet will bring Elvis Presley to life at 2 p.m. on Sunday, August 30th, here at the library. Ed Parzanet will perform Elvis's hits from the 50s, 60s, and his Las Vegas years. Please register soon for this program. Seating is limited. This Sunday's On Stage program is sponsored by the Batavia Public Library Foundation. Now for a look at September. The library will be closed Sunday, September 6th, and Monday, September 7th, in observance of Labor Day. High school students can take a free PSAT at the library on September 13th from 12.30 to 4 p.m. Please register as soon as possible as space is limited. Register online at bataviapubliclibrary.org or call the reference desk. September is National Library Card Sign-Up Month. Do you have a library card? Do your children have library cards? This is a great time of year to come in and register for a library card. The new school year has begun, and the library has a number of resources to help students succeed. Parents and students, do you know about Live Homework Help? Live Homework Help is an online tutoring service that students can access through the library website. This service provides homework help to Batavia students in grades K through 12. Students are connected with live tutors who can help them with math, science, social studies, and English. Live homework help is available seven days a week from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. Any student who lives in the library district or who attends a Batavia school can use live homework help. This service is sponsored by the library and the Batavia School District. Students can call the reference desk to get the password and then log on to live homework help under research and databases on the library's website. Live homework help has helped more than 3,000 Batavia students since 2008. Please utilize the resources provided by your library. Remember, we're here to help. I'm Michelle Martzell, and I hope to see you at the library. Welcome back. In local news, BATV will be holding a benefit concert and world premiere of their brand new docuseries, Our Underground, on Saturday, September 5th. Kiss the Sky of Batavia has donated the venue, and the musical group Noah's Arcade will be performing. Doors open at 7.15 p.m., and all donations will be used to help BATV. It has been just announced that the Tony Award winning musical The Book of Mormon will be returning to Chicago in 2016. This Broadway classic will be held yet again at the Bank America Theater on Monroe Street in Chicago, where it broke records for ticket sales in 2012 and 2015 for a seven week run. Tickets for groups of 15 or more are available online at www.broadwayinchicago.com. Individual ticket sales will be held at a later date. Not too long after winning yet another cup with the Chicago Blackhawks, Patrick Kane is being accused of rape that allegedly took place at his Buffalo home on August 2nd. Lieutenant Thomas English, an off-duty police officer and longtime friend of Kane's, is the latest person to come forward with information. He told the media that he served as Kane's chauffeur that night of the alleged incident. 
English said that Kane was a part of a group with two other females and one of his male friends. English admitted that he had no way of knowing what happened when the group went inside of the house, but claims it was a mutual agreement for the group to go in. After the initial accusation and reports, Kane has lost some endorsements, including being taken off of the cover of the EA Sports NHL 16 video game. There have been no charges filed against Kane, and the investigation is ongoing. Now let's join Katie Drum with the park bench and watch the Elder Day ribbon cutting ceremony. Hi there, I'm Katie Drum, the Marketing and Sponsorship Coordinator for the Batavia Park District, and welcome to the Park Bench. Um, I'm bringing you news today from the Eastside Community Center, home to the New Horizons Preschool. Uh, New Horizons is a unique program based on the philosophy that children learn through play. Our knowledgeable staff provide a safe and happy environment where children are encouraged to think independently, be creative, and freely explore in a structured atmosphere. School starts the day after Labor Day, and there's still actually time to sign your child up. If you have questions or would like a tour of New Horizons, please contact Preschool Supervisor Lori McDonald at 630-406-5283, extension 2161. And although school is back in session, summer isn't over yet. Uh, there's actually time still to go paddle boating on the Fox River. But be sure to be quick because the last day to uh, take a leisurely ride down uh, the Fox River is on September 6th. Uh, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 5 to 8 p.m. and 1 to 6 p.m. on the weekends. And paddle boat rides are actually perfect for a date night or for a special night out with your family. Um, be sure to check out the fall brochure for a special coupon. Uh, speaking of the River Walk, uh, history is returning to Batavia September 10th through the 13th with a Civil War enactment. It's brought to you by the Batavia Depot Museum and there will be countless activities, demonstrations, and other educational opportunities for both children and adults to learn about life during the Civil War. For the full Civil War enactment schedule, please visit www.bataviaparks.org. And also be sure to mark your calendars for our annual Mom and Son Wagon Rides coming up on September 24th. Enjoy a special night with your son at West Main Community Park. Wagon rides and dinner will be provided, as well as followed by campfire time and s'mores for dessert. Uh, the event begins at 6 p.m. sharp, and pre-registration is required. Um, the rain date is October 1st, and if you'd like more information about pricing or how to register, please call 630-879-5235. And also, one last reminder, the Batavia Park District offices will be closed Saturday through Monday, September 5th through 7th, in observation of Labor Day. Uh, we hope that everyone has a safe and relaxing holiday weekend, and we'll see you next time on the park bench. Okay, I guess we got everybody here. Uh, I think most of you know who I am, but those of you who don't, my name is Jeff Schoke. I have the honor of being the mayor of the city of Batavia at this moment. And the city of Batavia, along with Batavia Main Street, and Jamie's here someplace <laughs> behind me, and Jamie Som, the executive director of Batavia Main Street, and Holly Dykeman, who is the executive director of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce, are joining me here today to kind of, I guess, re-welcome Elder Day Center to Batavia. Uh, this has been an extraordinary institution to have in our town, and one that really works to the heart and soul of the Batavia community, and really does, in your own kind of special way, very quiet and unassuming, some very good work that helps and, and supports a whole bunch of very most deserving folks. And so Batavia is blessed to have this facility in our town, and we are honored that uh, you continue to grow and prosper, and we wish you uh, continued growth in the days ahead as you uh, seek to prom promote your mission and get the this place really rocking and rolling and serving the place like you are doing. So we really are excited to have you here. And on behalf of the community of Batavia, I just want to publicly thank Elder Day Center for all the good work that you are doing and will continue to do. So uh, Batavia today is a community that's got a lot of things happening. We got 26,000 people and we got a lot of different folks moving in. So there's always a kind of a new audience arriving and. We have people constantly asking questions about facilities, needs like this. So I think you've hopefully found a home here and will be here for many, many years. And for those of you who don't know, this used to be the old uh, McQueen School. And this building is, is uh, named after the McQueen sisters. There were two McQueens that were teachers in the Batavia school system. One of them was Grace McQueen. And she is the longest serving t school teacher in the history of Batavia. She taught for 59 years. Wow. 
and uh, she uh, was uh, the, the school after they moved out of here they named a new school after the Queens out on West Main Street and so this is uh, you're not only in, a, in an interesting institution or building but you're in a very kind of historic facility here because this was the, well, the original McQueen School sites where this that was originally put to practice in Batavia. So there's a lot of history that swerves around this site here. <laughs> and then we were blessed when the Bethany Lutheran Church had the opportunity to buy this building. And then the school district took the money they got from, buy, from selling this to the church and bought the old library across the street. And then the library had enough money that they could buy the old high school site and build a new library. So it was kind of a three-step, three, and so it goes, and it was kind of a three-step move that really did make some dynamic historical difference in our town, not only for today, but for tomorrow. So I've talked about as much as I should, and I just again want to thank the Elder Day Center for all you're doing to make Batavia such a great place for us all to live. So with that out of the way, we will officially cut the scissor. One, two, three... Thank you everybody for coming out and celebrating with us. Um, it is not without passion that Elder Day is even here. And so it takes a group of dedicated people and a community that really believes in taking care of one another to make uh, Elder Day Center succeed. And so I'm, as I stand here looking out into this crowd, um, it's our staff that is with our clients every day who have the passion to, um, to love on our seniors and to care for them and to engage them in therapeutic activities. It's our board that after 40 hours of working or um, arranging fundraisers to make sure that we have resources um, to take care of our seniors. It's the people that are in this room who are our neighbors, our friends, um, that take care of one another and are uh, supporters of Elder Day and spirit um, and um, in resources that um, we can make this community work. Um, I grew up right here in Batavia and so all those comments, Mayor Schelke, that you mentioned, I remember them when this was a school. I remember when I went to the library across the street and not over this way. <laughs> And it's such an opportunity to, um, I describe it as a circle of life, is that you know, we are molded and shaped by the communities that we grow up in and that we are a part of, and what an opportunity it is to give back to those um, who are uh, faced with challenges of aging. And so we can do it with grace, and we can keep people in their homes and with their loved ones for as long as possible. So thank you all for coming out and celebrating with us. Um, and we'll try not to cry, so <laughs> thank you. All right. Nice job. Welcome back. In national news, Starbucks has just announced that they will be changing their recipe for their famous pumpkin spice latte this upcoming fall. Starbucks says they are removing caramel coloring and any artificial flavors. For color, the new drink will have different fruit and vegetable juices, including real pumpkin. As of Tuesday, the White House has announced that President Barack Obama has appointed the first openly transgender White House staff member. Rafi Friedman Gerspan will serve as an outreach and recruitment director in the White House Office of Presidential Personnel. She is being viewed as a leader and role model as she empowers others like her. Now let's take it to Nan Phillips with the board brief. Hi, I'm Nan Phillips. I'm representing the Batavia Foundation for Educational Excellence today, as well as the Hall of Honor Committee. You may have heard that the um, inaugural class of the Batavia Public Schools Hall of Honor is being inducted during homecoming week, September 16th through September 19th this year. We're so excited. We've got a lot of great events planned, and we want you to be there come on September 19th to the Batavia Fine Arts Center to honor and celebrate the successes of the inductees. Um, I'll remind you who they are. Ken Anderson, Bob Dahlstrom, Jim Hansen, Dan Issel, Don Kramer, Bob Peterson, Jim Roberts, Craig Sager, Jeff Schilke, and Tim Schmitz represent the alumni. We're also honoring Batavia Public Schools staff Lisa Palacy and Marilyn Robinson, and BPS friends, 
Les Hodge, and Jean Tyre. You can buy your tickets at the Batavia Fine Arts Center website, which is www.bataviafineartscenter.org, or you can call 630-937-8930. Tickets are on sale for $50 or for children 12 and under $25. It's going to be a great event. We've got wonderful food being provided by Enticing Cuisine, um, lots of time to socialize, and then the formal induction and celebration award presentation to our honorees. So come and see them, get a chance to honor them for their local contributions, their statewide as well as national contributions and success from Batavia Public Schools. See you there, save the date, buy your ticket. Welcome back everyone. Anna and I have a little bit more information about Batavia Public School District Hall of Honor. On homecoming night, Saturday, September 19th, 2015, Batavia Public School District 101 will welcome 14 inductees into the inaugural Hall of Honor at Batavia High School to, and celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Batavia Foundation for Educational Excellence. The BPS Hall of Honor was initiated by the Batavia Foundation for Educational Excellence and BPS 101 to promote pride in the Batavia Public Schools and to honor alumni, faculty, and friends who have made outstanding accomplishments locally, statewide, and nationally since they have been associated with District 101. On Saturday, September 19th, the BPS Hall of Honor celebration will be held at the Batavia Fine Arts Center. Doors will open at 5.45 p.m. for a reception catered by Enticing Cuisine. At 7.30 p.m., an award ceremony will take place on the main stage of the Batavia Fine Arts Center. Tickets are available online at BataviaFineArtsCenter.org or by calling 630-937-8930. Tickets are $50 for adults and $25 for children 15 and under. Because the award ceremony will be part of Homecoming Week, Hall of Honor inductees will also be recognized at the Homecoming Parade on Wednesday, September 16th, the football team dinner on, uh, on Thursday, September 17th, and the Homecoming football game on Friday, September 18th. Please welcome the following 2015 inductees. The Batavia High School alumni include Ken Anderson, Bob Dahlstrom, Jim Hansen, Dan Issel, Don Kramer, Bob Peterson, Jim Roberts, Craig Sager, Mayor Schelke, and Tim Schmitz. The BPS 101 faculty inductees include Lisa Palacy and Marilyn Robinson. And finally, your BPS 101 friends, Les Hodge and Jean Tierer. Congratulations, inductees. In tech news, Apple has been losing money ever since they were at their all-time high in April 2015. Apple admits that iPhone sales weren't all that they were projected to be this year. Apple also has been losing one of its top customers, China. In the past, China has accounted for about 25% of Apple's total global sales. Apple has now gone from the number one smartphone in China to the number three smartphone in China, sitting behind the Chinese tech companies Xiaomi and Huawei. Now let's go to Bill McGrath with the Municipal Minute. Hi, I'm Bill McGrath, the Batavia City Administrator. Today is August 19th, and this is the Municipal Minute for this week. Uh, the Houston Street Streetscape Project continues. Uh, we appreciate uh, any inconvenience that any of you might have in uh, getting to your homes at Waterford on the Fox or in Quarry Stone or getting to your uh, business in the office buildings that are there. Uh, I especially want to make sure that everyone understands that both the, that the Popcorn Depot, the Open Range, and the Depot Museum are all open at their regular hours. It's very easy to get there as long as you park north of Houston Street as both Island Avenue and Water Street are both fully open and there's a clear safe pathway to uh, cross Houston at Water Street and at Island Avenue. Uh, I'd suggest if you're going to go to the Open Range and the Popcorn Depot uh, and the museum of course to uh, access those through Water Street. Um, NICOR is working there right now, finishing up moving a gas main. AT&T is moving some phone lines uh, and we're installing some new storm sewer at the moment. So uh, we're hoping to have this project done sometime in October and it'll be a great addition, uh, but I'll be glad it's over. Um, it certainly uh, it was a little factor at Art in Your Eye this weekend. I think the biggest factor was the heat 
everybody who did attend enjoyed the, the festival. I think a lot of people are under the impression that it is uh, just an art show and it's much more than an art show. That's why Art in Your Eye is called the Art in Your Eye Festival. Uh, there is art, th three different shows, one being the fine art show, which is, has draws from people from all over the region and the country. Uh, and that's a judged uh, festival with some, or judged show, excuse me, with some uh, cash prizes. Then there's a city hall art show, which is also juried. Uh, but the uh, entry is free and that's open to relatively local artists uh, so we can all see what people in our own territory are doing. And then thirdly, there's a student legacy show where uh, high school age students from the area can show some of their uh, pieces as well. So uh, one of the great things is that the City Hall show and the Student Legacy exhibit are in the air-conditioned City Council chambers. So it's a great thing on a hot uh, weekend to look at some of the fine art show uh, and then go into the uh, City Hall for a little while to cool off. In any event, in addition to the uh, uh, art shows, uh, we have a lot of uh, um, uh, tents and booths that are manned by the many uh, not-for-profits uh, related to the arts in our area. So we have the uh, Fox Valley Music Foundation, Water Street Studios, uh, among others, where you can uh, ask a few questions and see what these great groups are doing, uh, particularly for uh, the uh, younger people in the community. In addition to that, there's a children's tent, and I think a lot of people have fun uh, getting their kids to have a chance to uh, uh, throw uh, pottery on a wheel. Uh, do some painting and come away with some uh, uh, things that the kids have made themselves. And then uh, there's also food booths. And last but not least, there's continuous music uh, combined with a beer tent that starts on Friday night uh, before the art festival even opens. We have terrific, uh, terrific entertainment. Um, and then uh, all day Saturday, there's music. And then again on Saturday night. So even though the art show uh, shuts down at 5 o'clock on each evening. Uh, entertainment starts or continues on until uh, 10.30 at night. So it's, uh, the festival really has something for everyone in the community. So remember that for uh, next year. The, uh, uh, the next event, or at least social event, uh, is uh, the Block Party, sponsored by Main Street, and that is on Sunday, September 6th, Labor Day weekend. It's from 4 to 9 p.m. on North River Street. Brush collection continues in the community and there are two and perhaps three dates left. The east side has collections scheduled for the week of September 14th, the week of September, or excuse me, the week of October 12th, and the week of November 30th, weather permitting. The west side has brush pickup scheduled for September 21st, the week of October 19th and the week of November 30th, again, um, weather permitting. Uh, the City Council a few years ago added the extra pickup uh, on, after the uh, Thanksgiving Day weekend to give people that last opportunity, uh, but I have to say that it's weather permitting because we are in the midst of changing some of our uh, uh, trucks over for snow plowing and um, it's important to get that brush out. If we have a lot of snow then uh, neither our contractors nor uh, the city can uh, help people. So try and get it done in that September and October uh, time frame. The deadline for the Parkway Tree Program is September 15th. There are details on the city website or you can call uh, Public Works at 454-2300. Uh, there's a lot of uh, nice trees that you can order and the city shares the cost 50-50 with the homeowner. The, sh the uh, variety of trees are designed to uh, uh, do really well if you happen to live in a neighborhood where there's uh, power wires overhead, overhead and if not there are other species that will get quite large and they're all uh, kind of disease resistant and uh, should be the kind of tree that will last and uh, for a long time. It, it not only increases the value of property, but it creates a shade and it's overall good for the community. Um, I wanted to remind you that if you're interested in attending or viewing the next city council meeting, because of Labor Day, the meeting is moved from the first Monday of September to the Tuesday, the next day, and so that will be Tuesday, September 
8th. Um, effective on January 15th of this year, the city now requires the permits for driveway replacements. And this is not only the aprons, which are on the city parkway, but actually for the driveway that's on people's private property. The reason for this is uh, to protect the drainage uh, plan that's been laid out for most of the area. We just can't afford to have people's nice project uh, lead to a drainage problem for them or for their neighbors. And also the purpose is to make sure that the, there's the proper setback from uh, side uh, lot lines. We don't want to have any neighbor disputes, but a lot of lot lines also are, the, uh, are set aside for drainage to run through if there's a, a, a lot of uh, water. So that's the main feature. There are handouts and descriptions of what the regulations are on the city website. Or again, you can call the city uh, building department at 454-2700 uh, and people would be glad to talk with you about it. It's always better to uh, kind of come in and talk about what your plans might be, uh, you know, a couple of months before you actually uh, want to do it. We have to look at uh, uh, surveys and look at your design. It's, it's actually, it's a great winter activity to come in and do the planning when our building people have more time to review things. Uh, we've recently contracted with an engineering firm to do some water system monitoring. As you can imagine, the stormwater system is very complex, especially with the growth that's taken place in the last 25 years. Um, and some systems that were put in place uh, 25, 20, even 20 years ago uh, behave somewhat differently after there is growth. Standards have changed. Materials have changed that flow water quicker than they used to. So um, we're doing some flow monitoring. Uh, so we're, we're hoping for some heavy rains, frankly, because this gives us a good idea of exactly how those systems are working. As I said, they're quite complex, and this will help us um, see the kinds of things that we need to do to um, aid some of our residents that are having some flood, flooding problems or drainage problems in the most severe uh, rain uh, events. Uh, we always know where the problems are, but that doesn't know that they have. That doesn't tell us where those problems have started. So that's the reason for water monitoring. Um, you may have read some articles that the uh, class action suit, which was attempted to be filed uh, and heard relating to the Prairie State uh, power generating station, was recently dismissed in federal court. Uh, I can't give legal advice, but the uh, opinion will be available on our website and you can make of it what you will. Um, but our attorney is looking it over now and seeing what that impact might be on, on us as a city. The city was not a party to that lawsuit other than being named as someone who had documents that might be of uh, aid to the class, which was named as all the... Uh, uh, utility ratepayers uh, for electric in the city. Um, the people who filed the suit have some time uh, to refile that or change some of their wording, but uh, we'll certainly uh, let you know what's happening with, with that. And basically that's all I have for this week's uh, Municipal Minute, and we'll just see you next time and be safe out there. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Here in Batavia, student athletes have been making a difference. BHS Girls Volleyball, Cross Country, Tennis, and Golf teamed up with Boys Basketball to collect items for the Batavia Interfaith Food Pantry. These Athletes Against Hunger were able to drop off food collection bags at 2,800 homes in Batavia on Saturday, August 1st. Altogether, these student athletes collected $450 in donations and 3,866 food items. Great job, athletes! Summer break has officially come to an end, and all students are now back to school. Batavia High School students returned to class on Monday. The middle school and elementary school students returned on Wednesday. Welcome back, BPS 101. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on YouTube under the username BATV1017. Be sure to like us on Facebook and sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on the station's current happenings. Thanks again for watching. I'm Anna. And I'm Alyssa. And, and that's, that's news, news to me. me. Hey, that's news to me.